Welcome to the bushwalk. I, think this, I bet you didn't think that we were going to get this ride though, like today. It's a long time in the coming and I must be happy or I'm happy to say uh, welcome back. Um, this is still part of the test that we're doing. So if we don't get it 100% right today, it's because we haven't quite got rid of all the gremlins that, uh, that we have in the system. But nevertheless, we are going to try. Now, if you don't know, I am Stefan Winterboer. I am a trail guide specialist and on camera today we have got Brian who's a specialist in his own right there looking like a Terminator doll with <laughs> his aerial in his backpack. Um, but before we go I just want to reintroduce the walk, the concept of the walk to everybody. Basically we wanted to see if we could bring you other experience foot. The same as what we do in the vills but we wanted to do it on foot for you and we wanted to do it from the middle of of pieces of land and we wanted to do it and we wanted to do it as wild as we could and we've actually got it right to be honest with you it's been a few months in the in the practice but we definitely have got it but you will notice that i do carry a rifle because of us being far away from a vehicle and we are away from lodges it's just a piece of safety equipment very similar to i suppose a, a airbag in your vehicle or a car seat you know you don't want to have to use it but you're glad that it's there if you do you'll also notice that i have a white armband on that is just regulation for trails guide registered trails guides in the area to have and it's just to single me out for lack of a better word or expression um, from people who are not supposed to be here but without further ado we've come to this area today because this time of the year elephant love this woodland as you see around us it is lots of trees here and it definitely enjoy this elephant on foot are exciting and right off the cuff Muffin Brown found a place where elephants have been enjoying the afternoon as you can see trees you're just panning through now the trees are on the western side of this little thicket and elephants have obviously been standing in the shade here in the afternoon and I'm lying where I'm standing excuse me where a baby elephant was lying I'm going to bend down a little bit so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about this area here was where a young elephant slept against this termite mound. And it's a young elephant because of this grot is standing here and there and coming past me it's still standing over here. So that would be elephant's style. And I thought he was close to mom because mom's dung is right here. This is mom's dung and I know that the members of the herd around because they've been digging out the roots of this combretum. Let me get over to this combretum. I'm standing here. And the thing is, is they've excavated the roots around this combretum. They've dug with their foot, probably taking their toe and digging in with their foot, taking their trap and pulling out the roots and eating it, breaking off the branches and eating the tree as they go along. Excuse me, the fly gave me a fright. What they've done is they've excavated it. Now, this tree will probably survive this, funnily enough. And I'm going to show you why. Mother Nature is a wonderful thing. Mother Nature's provided the perfect depression for water to cut, as well as dead leaves in the, you know, at the end of winter. And it's sort of a natural compost heap. And uh, this tree will self-compost, basically, all its dead leaves. And those are the roots, the regeneration roots that will help the tree to love uh, what it basically looks like it feels hot on the trail of these elephants at the moment. We just heard some trumpeting distance. That's our mission to try and we can get you close to some elephant on and uh, we're going to carry tracking these guys now so why don't you come and join us. Now, the title is a little shaky and jump time to tap the stabilizers uh, that is common on the vehicles, at least anyway. And wants to do all of that with the vehicle and own job as well. Now, what 
creeping through the bush. We absolutely try and listen as much as we can. And you just that I'm stick in There's an area that I walk and therefore what has noise for me to walk. That's the hope way. Wind direction also plays a very important important part in in determining where you are. And quite often, some grass crushed. Give you an idea of wind direction. I can see very east afternoon or night anyway, with the wind sting slightly on slope with normal for time of the day. Interesting down slope to relax, but nothing really should find ourselves about, and we keep on going. myself and I think the audio is a bit jumpy and I just want to say, um, you know, thank you for preparing us during these. While myself and Brian get into a better position to show you I hope from Elephant, we're going to be crossing through to Jeremy who has got something to show you it's in the left as well, So see you in a bit. Hello everybody, welcome back to Sindile. He is still lying on the ground doing what cats do best, of course, which is what for him? Snoozing. Snoozing, precisely. And a leopard will sleep for roughly, well, probably up to 18 hours a day in some cases. This little chap is pretty energetic normally, um, but when I have been around him in the afternoons, this is when he likes to have his uh, general repose and when it gets a bit cooler, he'll perhaps, perhaps move around a bit. Wasn't that wonderful to be on foot with Steph? It really is the truest and best way to experience the wilderness. So I hope we do sort out the audio issues. I'm sure we will. Eugenius is on the job, of course, and various others whose intellectual capabilities far exceed my own. And if you ever get a chance to come out here, you know, walking safari is possibly the best way to experience Africa. To have your feet crunching on African soil and inhaling the African air in the absence of a vehicle is a primal, primal experience and certainly one that I really enjoy doing even now after so long being out here. Sindile is just uh, shaking his ears a little at the flies which will get exponentially worse as we go towards the summertime. I seldom have seen leopards sleep this restfully, I must say. They're normally heads up and looking every so often. Maybe he feels a certain sense of comfort of, have, as, of having us here, and maybe he realizes that should a lion come along, one of us will get up and point frantically. the odd game drive vehicle coming in throughout the course of the afternoon and that is of course is not a bad thing it's a really good thing for conservation out here to have lots of tourists tourists coming to and fro but it's also a testament to what this animal that we're looking at here the leopard panthera pardis has done for tourism and for conservation in this area and in case I'll just give you a little bit of a basic history of the Sabi Sands where we find ourselves now. Um, the Sabi Sands is 60,000 hectares on the western fringes of the Greater Kruger National Park and 
It was made famous by a number of iconic safari brands. And the big three of this area, the, well, the big four or so, are Mala Mala, Londolozi, Singita, and probably Sabi Sabi. Mala Mala was the original one, just to the north of the Sand River, which is, as the crow flies, about five or six kilometers to the south of us. And then on Londolozi, a pioneer called John Varty, who ostensibly wanted to film leopards, um, he managed to habituate a leopard female there, which he na named the mother. And from her, generations of leopards have been viewed because she was habituated and so her cubs became habituated and their cubs after them and that was in the 70s and that ability to be able to sh no one else had managed to show people leopards in in the same way that the pioneers at Londolozi and Malamana had and once that happened it became re we realized that it was possible to show people leopards and people when they come out here this is the first animal they ask to see this magnificent spotted cat. Look at his little claws. And so that's a little bit of the history of the safari industry here in the Sabi Sands. Now, of course, it's a massive industry and it probably employs just the Sabi Sands. For every guest that comes in here, we probably every guest supports about or employs about three or four people. And each of the people, local people who work on these reserves, support at home about eight to ten people. So you can imagine, if there are, there are probably roughly, say, 500 beds, guest beds in the Sabi Sands, multiply that by four and you get to 2,000, multiply that by eight and you get to 16,000 people supported by tourists who come ostensibly to see that animal there. Isn't that amazing? I think it's astonishing. Right, I'm just going to excuse myself on the radio. Somebody's trying to come in here. Go ahead. Just got somebody else coming in to see young Sandile, who was sat up, to decide whether he wants this person to, or not. I do wonder what he feels. He's never alone for very long, and I wonder if he doesn't think, what on earth are these people doing around here, consistently coming to watch me sleep? A valid question. You can see how cub-like his head still is. His face is still very cub-like. It doesn't have the severity that a big male leopard has. those elephant that we uh, that we were looking for myself and Brian were tracking a buffalo front up and we came over this termite mound that I'm on and right over my shoulder is this elephant that you can see in the background over there we're quite close about 50 meters away from that elephant there are other elephants in the area and elephant herds on foot are a different story to elephant herds in the in the vehicle they're probably the most dangerous thing to approach out here on foot. Everything else around here, from lion, you'd expect lion to be more dangerous, or the big elephant to be more dangerous. But a mommy and protecting her babies definitely is one of those things that I'm the most nervous of. So what myself and Brian have done is we've come using the cover of this termite mount to keep us hidden for as much as all we can. I'm hiding behind this bush, Brian is as well, and we're keeping a very very good eye on the wind direction every so often just taking some crushed glass letting it go now the breeze is blowing us onto those elephants they haven't become aware of us actually but it's not a, it's not the safest place to be where we are where we are in a wind position from those from those elephants what we want to try to do is be in a downwind position or a 
hide from them. They don't seem to be doing very much to they just feed You can see they're swimming out of the grass. That's elephant on foot, and uh, breeze has picked up a bit. Myself and Brian are going to be moving obliquely on this elephant right now, so that we can get in a down position. And uh, while we do that, we are going to link back to James, and uh, we'll catch up in a little bit. Thanks. Well, isn't it wonderful that you got to see some elephants on foot with Steph? I'm sure a lot of your hearts are racing, but probably not as much as Steph, and probably a lot less than Brian's, the cameraman, because he spent a lot less time on foot in the bush than Steph. Great news, though, and so happy that you got to see that. We haven't left these old buffalo bulls. They're still relaxing here, and we're relaxing with them. Maybe Andrew can... Oh, no. There was a fork-tailed dronga that you may have seen skimming across the water, having a bath and a drink at the same time, but it stopped before I, Andrew got a chance to get it. But it is up there, and let's see if it doesn't take another bath. Some of you may remember the sighting of the juvenile Woodlands Kingfisher. That was actually plopping itself down into the water and floating there like a duck for a few, few seconds before taking off again. It was on a very hot summer's afternoon and very unique behavior because I'd never seen a bird actually landing and holding its wings out in the water to keep itself afloat. They are obviously buoyant, but it was a really fun sighting. <laughs> 